Good day to you and welcome to Critical Perspectives on Social Media Use, CMST 340. My name is Rob McKenzie. I'm the professor for the class. I'm also the department chair of communication and I'm standing here in the Monroe building at East Stroudsburg University for those of you who don't go here. For those of you who do, you probably recognize this building if, you're, if you've taken classes in here. I'd like to go into my office here and introduce you to the course. But first, let me just show you what my office looks like. It's very typical of our offices here in the Monroe building. We consider ourselves very lucky to have these beautiful offices, each person decorating them as they like. And I'm going to swing around to my desk here. I'm going to introduce you to the course and tell you what it's all about. As you're sitting there in your home, on your laptop, in your kitchen, or your bedroom, or at your place of work, or wherever you are, perhaps even in the car, on your phone, doing a college course. Who could, who could think of that? And I just wanted to begin by... One sec. My friend's giving me hell about the Eagles barely winning over the Giants. I mean, yeah, the Giants, they have the worst offense in the NFL, but the Eagles still won the game. Okay. All right, so I was, where was I? I was uh, talking about the course, Critical Perspectives on Social Media Use. And it, one sec. Son wants to know if he can go over his friends after school today. All right. Yeah, that's what life is like, right? That's what life is like today with social media. Constant interruptions. Constant fragmentation in our lives. The fact is that social media is here to stay, and it's an important part of our lives. I ask you, how many times before you before you started watching this video have you checked out social media today? I'm pretty sure that every single person in this class has already been on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and for many of you, multiple times. So that's what we want to understand. We want to understand how life today is impacted by our use and others' use of social media. And we need to do that from an academic standpoint by studying our use of social media, being informed by concepts by people who have studied the phenomenon of social media use. So let's get into it. Let's talk about class. First thing I want to say about this class is it's designed to be flexible to your needs. And what that means is each and every day, you have 24 hours to complete the assignments, including today. And those 24 hours begin at 12 o'clock noon. So each day, a video will be posted by me at 12 o'clock noon, and then you have all the way until 12 o'clock noon to get to your assignments and turn them in on D2L. Now, speaking of D2L, D2L is the software used by ESU to deliver course content online. There is a way for you to set up in D2L under settings, notifications. Notifications that every time I give you a grade for an assignment or every time I send out a change to an assignment, you get notified on your cell phone. That's a handy way for you to not miss assignments because the biggest complaint I hear about by students about online courses is they forget that assignments are due and they're not able to stay up with the course and they lose time. And that's something that you cannot afford to do in this class because it's a winter session class, it's a month long, and everything is happening every single day. So you miss a few days, you kind of screwed yourself over. Don't put yourself in that position, okay? All right, so if you want to take a moment to print out your syllabus, I think it would be helpful if you have that handy or bring it up on your computer, and then we'll dig into it, okay? So let's take things from the top. My name is Rob McKenzie. I have a PhD from Penn State University. My PhD is in international broadcasting. I'm a professor here at ESU. I've been here for 26 years, and I'm also the chairperson of the Department of Communication. And by the way, on that score, if any of you ever have any questions about classes in communication, I'd only be more than glad to help you. So what I want to do in the rest of this video is go over the syllabus so that you know exactly what's expected of you in the course. If you ever need to get in touch with me, the quickest way by far is email. I check my email constantly. It's another example of social media pervading our lives. I have it on 24 hours a day, so I will always get you a quick response, especially during this course. What's this course about? Well, the description is students will study a variety of critical perspectives to analyze and interpret how social media use affects our human thought, our behavior, and our feelings. The course is nothing short of that. 
The departmental outcomes, we have to have outcomes for every course that you take in the Department of Communication. I will lead you to read those on your own on the syllabus. Every student who takes a course in our department should be achieving those outcomes. But the course also has some outcomes, and those outcomes are also listed for you here. I'm not going to go over them in detail. The limitations are of, of videos are that you can lose an audience if you go into too much detail, so you can read those on your own as well. Now, when we get to social media, look, just to make sure that we have a common understanding of it, continuing on the last item on page one of the syllabus, the phrase social media in this class refers to websites and apps, apps on your phone, and computers that can that allow users or people to connect with each other. Now in this course we're going to use a generic word called a post. We're going to use post to refer generically to anything describing content which can be words, memes, emojis, photos, video, links, etc. Any content that you put on social media. So even though Twitter uses the phrase tweets, we're going to use post to describe anything that you put on social media. All right, turn on the page here. Attendance in the class, well, attendance in the class is designed to be flexible. Like I said, you've got from 12 noon till 12 noon the next day to complete things, but you can't miss class. Can't miss an, a winter session class that's running every single day except for Christmas and New Year's. Can't miss class. Got it, I can't emphasize that enough. All right, there are three readings for the course. The first one is a book called Social Media and Personal Relationships. It's my first time through the book. I'm very optimistic about it. I think it will help us get at a lot of the human frailties that result in the context of our social media use. So that's a book that you need to get. It's 2013 is the publication date. It's by Deborah Chambers. The second book is a book that I wrote. It's called Rounding Some Corners. You can get it on Amazon. You can also find it on the web in various places, and also the ESU Bookstore has it. This is a book that consists of newspaper columns that I used to write for the Pocono Record, many of which are making fun of, and also making light of, and also hoping to provide insight into our use of social media. It's a book that I assigned in this course because we're going to study the phenomenon of social media use by posting things on your own personal social media site. More about that in a few minutes and to try and get reactions from your followers. And so this book will provide the content to try and get those reactions. And then we're gonna analyze those reactions using the concepts from the other book that we just introduced in the course. And then finally, there's an academic journal article at the end of the course. It's already posted on D2L. And at the end of the course, we'll be using it. It's called Social Media and Its Effects on Individuals and Social Systems. And that's by Natasha Zeidelbank and also Ute taught. They are Austrians. All right, so next up on the syllabus is the idea that in this course you'll be put into social media teams. You're going to be um, forming yourself into teams. You can go on to D2L and you can sign up for one of the four social media teams. This is the platform that you'll be posting on all semester long. It's also the platform that you will be launching your, your viral media project. Um, that'll be explained in a moment. So there's only four students per social media team. There's 16 students in the class, so four are able to sign up. If four have already signed up for Snapchat or Twitter, then don't add your name to the list. You have to sign up for a social media platform that still has space, and we can only accommodate four students. All right, now I mentioned the Rounding Some Corners posts. That's my book. Rounding Some Corners posts are also known as RSC posts. And what's the, what the story here is, each day of class, you are to pick two columns from this book. The columns are short, only take you a couple minutes to read them. There's almost 200 columns in the book. You get to choose which ones you want. It doesn't have to be in order of the book. You can go anywhere in the book. Choose one that has a headline that you like. And you're supposed to post two posts from two different columns on the social media platform of your, cho of your choice. And in posting your post, you're trying to get a reaction from your followers. So what you're doing is you're taking an idea that was presented in the column and you're trying to branch out with your own ideas. And the best way to get responses from your followers, because students sometimes say, oh, I didn't get any responses, I didn't get any shares, I didn't get any likes, I didn't get any comments. You want shares, you want likes, but most of all you want comments. You need those comments in order to complete the assignments for the class. So the best way to do that is either to provoke people to say something in your post, something like, I bet you're one of these people when you know that they're not because 
they're going to try and argue that they're not. They're going to feel offended, provoked. They're going to feel insulted. They're going to feel intrigued. They're going to want to respond. That's one way to get people to respond to your posts. A second way is to ask a question. What do you think? And then to get them to respond. Now, what about posting on your personal social media platform? That it's up to you whether you want to establish a brand new platform for this class because you don't want to post on social media, but keep in mind, you've got to have people who are responding to your post. So if you can guarantee that by posting on, on a brand new social media platform that you open up, then by all means do it. All right, now, next up is the idea of discussion responses. So these are graded assignments in the course that you'll do on D2L discussion post responses. You're required to turn in 11 discussion post responses to a discussion question that I will post each and every day starting tomorrow. And you need to pull material from the assigned reading in the course. In other words, you need to demonstrate in the discussion post response that you have read the chapter for that given day and that you're using that chapter to explain the responses that you're getting to your post on your social media platform on the RSC columns. So in order to do that, you've got to keep within a word count of 190 to 210 words, roughly 200 words. Don't go under, don't go over, you'll lose points. So please pay attention to that. Make sure that you have some kind of document processing system like Word, Microsoft Word, that will count your words for you. So that's what you're gonna do. And also, when you post on your RSC column, um, on your social media platform, you have to use the hashtags, two of them. You have to use the hashtags, hashtag RSC, and also hashtag rounding some corners, all one word, but capital R, capital S, capital C. It's all listed on the syllabus for you. You must include those two hashtags. That's going to help generate discussion. Now, the way that your discussion post responses are going to be evaluated is according to the word count. According to using proper grammar and correct spelling, no small case I, no, no abbreviations like see you later is in the letter C, the letter U, and L, the number 8, and R. You have to write properly. That's part of a college-level course at the 300 level. Also, your post is going to be evaluated according to writing clearly, and most of all, demonstrating understanding of the chapter concepts. If I don't see you citing chapter concepts in your discussion post response, you're going to lose points. So it's best for you to say, according to the book, this concept speaks to blah, 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 blah. And here we can see that in the response that I got to the post that I put on Instagram, on Snapchat, etc. And also, your post will be evaluated according to how you interpret how social media use impacts human communication. Okay, so you got 10 of those, but you're actually going to complete 11 discussion post response responses, but I will drop the lowest grade. So you, you get one that you kind of screwed up on or didn't quite understand the assignment or you weren't at your best that day that you created that response, and I will drop that grade. So 10 of them will be graded. All right, also, you will have what is known as discuss discussion replies. Okay, discussion replies are where you, you analyze another student's discussion response from the previous day, and instead of agreeing with that person, you're going to provide a counter-argument. You're going to argue against their interpretation. So this will get in the class a discussion going where we are playing devil's advocate with each other all the time. Devil's advocate is where you take an opposing viewpoint purely for the sake of it, so that helps tease out knowledge that you wouldn't otherwise be able to gain. And that's what the discussion post replies are all about. The discussion post replies will be due the next day. So tomorrow you'll have a discussion post response that's assigned. And once those discussion post responses are all in by Wednesday at noon, then you have to do discussion post replies by the next day. Discussion post replies will also be evaluated, and they will be evaluated according to the word count. They have to be 190 to 210 words also. Also using proper grammar and spelling. Also writing clearly. Also demonstrating of the chapter concepts. Also effectively applying concepts to social media use and interpreting how social media use impacts human communication. 
All of that is listed on the syllabus if you're not, not able to pick it up completely in my oral presentation of it right here. Okay, also for these discussion post replies, you have 11 of them that you'll be doing by the end of the course, and only 10 of them are going to be graded. The lowest one is going to be dropped. All right, next up is an assignment that's going to be called, that is called Project Viral. And what happens is the teams that you are in, your social media platform team, will undertake a viral media campaign to try and get your content to go viral, to get it to be expanded to as many people as possible. When something goes viral on the internet, it's beyond your control for how much it spreads. And the more it spreads, the more viral it is. That's our goal with this project so that it will help us understand what makes content go viral on social media. I'll give you the guidelines later on in the course as to how that project will be assigned. All right, then, so then you will have something that's called an analysis paper on Project Viral. That's going to be due at the very end of the course. That will be an individual paper that you will write analyzing how successful your project was in going viral. Again, those guidelines will be provided later. All right, so now let's turn to how you are going to be graded in the class. Okay, here's how the grades break down. You're going to have 100 points total for the class. 30 of those points will be discussion responses. So that's 10 discussion responses times three points each. Three points for every discussion response. That brings it to 30 points. And then similarly, you've got 10 discussion replies. And those are worth three points also. And that total also will be 30 points. Then you've got the execution of your project viral. The execution, how well did you execute what you said you were going to do as a team? That's going to be worth 20 points. And then finally, you've got your analysis paper on your project viral, and that's going to be worth 20 points. All of that comes to 100 points. The grading scale is listed for you there on the syllabus. An A means you've done an excellent job in the course. A B means you've done above average. C means you've done average in the course. D means you've done below average. And E, hopefully nobody will get that, means that you have been inadequate in your performance in the class. Now, as far as the point values and how those are all determined, that's all listed for you on the syllabus. And by the way, you should have the most recent copy of the syllabus, which I just revised this morning, right before creating and posting this video. So make sure you have the most up-to-date version of the syllabus. All right, continuing on with the syllabus now, we've got accessibility services that are individualized for students. If you have an accessibility need um, that has been certified by the Office of OASIS, which is the Office of Accessible Services Individualized for Students, it's in the Science and Technology Building here at ESU, you need to send me uh, a JPEG image of that sheet as it's been signed, uh, been assigned to you and then I'm able to make allowances according to what the guidelines are for your particular situation. Next up is my plagiarism policy on the syllabus. Students may not plagiarize from the web or other sources. Plagiarism, if you don't know already, is the taking of another person's material and presenting it as your own without proper citation and without rephrasing that work in terms of your own ideas. If I get plagiarism, I just turn it over to the Office of Student Conduct and let them determine whether plagiarism has taken place. All right, next up is something known as the Title IX statement. Um, that's basically about faculty assuring that you are working in a safe and productive environment, an environment free of harassment and particularly sexual harassment. It's uh, obviously a subject that is uh, very sensitive today because of everything that's happening with Hollywood movie stars and, and elected officials. And that Title IX, IX statement is on the syllabus to help outline that for you. Okay, so now looking ahead, what is assigned to you tomorrow is we're wrapping up the instructor video now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is go to a social media team and sign up for that team. And then you're going to be posting on that platform for the rest of the semester. The four platforms are Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. All right, next up is I want to assign student introductions. So everybody's going to introduce themselves in a video, including myself, a two-minute video. And that's got to be posted by 12 noon tomorrow. The guidelines for what I want you to cover in your video are posted on D2L under the content tab. So go check that out. There's seven things that I want you to address. The best way to do it is to record your video on your phone and then either upload it directly to D2L. You can Google how to do that or you can email the person in charge of D2L at ESU. Her name is Kelly O'Donnell and you can Google her on the ESU website or 
you can do what I do, which is to upload the video to YouTube and then share the link on D2L under where you're supposed to post your student introductions. So don't forget if you do that though, to make sure that your video is not um, classified as private on YouTube. It has to be a public video. So make sure that you, you uncheck that box that it's not private. All right, and then also you need to, by 12 noon tomorrow, do your first RSC posts and then post the responses to those posts um, on D2L by tomorrow. All of this will be explained on e an email that I'm sending out today. Um, in fact, you've got this video on, e on email and also I'm explaining it to, uh, directions to you um, in this instructor video. All right, so that's gonna wrap things up. This will probably be the longest video for the course at 20 minutes. But again, I wanna welcome you. This is gonna be a course, by the way, that's gonna help you not only in your march towards your progress at ESU and gaining your degree, but also when you go to apply for a job, to be able to demonstrate that you have had a college course and social media course is gonna be a big benefit to vaunting you, uh, vaulting you, I should say, ahead of other candidates. I have so many employers today that are contacting me as a professor and saying, do you have any students who are really skilled in social media use? Well, yeah, you may be skilled in it, but to be able to analyze it um, from a critical perspective, that's what this course is all about. So welcome.